I'm excited to be here today with our wonderful panel of specialists. I think it's a, it's a great representation because we have Dr. Paul Turek, who is here to talk about the men's side of things. He's the founder and director of the Turek Clinic and works with men primarily, I believe. <laughs> so I'm keen to get the male perspective. We also have Dr. Suzanne Gilberg-Lentz, who is a reproductive endocrinologist. No, I'm a general OBGYN. Oh, well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. That's OK. We, we now and, all know. Yeah, now I know. <laughs> and I believe also has an integrative medicine yes. background. Yes. OK, correct. So, um, so that's great. We have another the female doctor's perspective. Right. And then we have Simone Bien who is uh, a relationship and therapist. So therapist, I, think yeah. we'll, I think we'll get the, the sex therapist even better. So let's get racy and spicy and dive right in. I would love to start with each of you briefly introducing yourselves to our audience. My name is Paul Turek. I have a men's health clinic. Started out in urology in Beverly Hills in San Francisco. And my specialty is defending the male. Um, I do fertility work, I do sexual dysfunction work, um, ejaculatory disorders, testosterone management. I'm not an anti-aging guy, I'm an empowering guy. So I like to make men the strongest they can be. Right? Without pills, without surgery, and just make them the best men they can be for their partners or their world. And um, believe me, we're way behind as men compared to women. This will come out very, you'll see it today, it'll come out how unrealized the potential of most men are from a sexual point of view. Sad but true, but we're there. We're all over it. <laughs> She's a plant. It's <laughs> lively already. I'm loving this. Okay. Uh, I'm Suzanne Gilbert Lenz. So as you already heard, I'm actually a general OBGYN. I'm in practice in Beverly Hills. But I also have a very long-standing mind-body practice. So I'm a long-time meditation and yogi person. I am uh, actually board certified in integrative and holistic medicine. And I'm also certified in Ayurvedic medicine. So if any of you have heard you know, about Chinese medicine, Ayurveda it was, is similar. It was what was growing up in India pretty much at the same time, five, 6,000 years ago. So I have a really uh, deep uh, personal and professional perspective on integrating the best of East and West. I do have a general practice in a total like conventional prestige Beverly Hills office, which is awesome. I'm very lucky. Did you say conventional Beverly Hills? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Where everybody goes to the doctor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have sort of that that you know hidden uh, power there. The other uh, area that I'm very interested in, obviously, because I do practice obstetrics and gynecology, is sexual health. So I do a lot of early fertility consultations, receiving fertility patients back, and also deal with sexual health, the range of sexual health, not just fertility related. So, and I have some training with um, international, it's ISHWISH. So it's inter if you guys don't know about this, you should already. International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health. And it's a really mm. fabulous organization. Cool. I am Simone Bien, and I just want to pick up on something that Suzanne said, which is to do with Ayurvedic medicine. I once had an Ayurvedic massage, and if you want to improve your sex life, that is something you need to do. Because did it, quite did frankly, it have a happy ending? On, it, did, it, did, it did have a happy ending. I had this big, it was when I was in India, I had this big Indian <laughs> woman, and I was being pushed on this wooden right, slab. Right, right, right. I'm not joking, Oiled like up. my breasts oiled up, my yep. breasts were going <laughs> here, and, and it was just phenomenal. But anyway, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> How much do you do that? Um, I am a sex and relationship therapist. I do a lot of TV work and radio work. And um, I have been very privileged actually to be uh, side by side with Dr. Drew Pinsky. Um, and we actually helped a couple um, who were having fertility issues and no longer have fertility issues, which was, uh, which was wonderful. So I have a private practice in Studio City. I am American and I put on this accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clever. I'm joking. Uh, people go, you put on that accent. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm really from England.
Ireland. So I moved here about um, three or four years ago, and so I've been uh, sort of have a, a wonderful private practice. And I see couples who are struggling to start a family, specifically from the sex aspect and the you know the emotional implications. So uh, which I know we'll talk more about later on. And um, I'm really passionate, obviously, about sort of helping helping women get what they want and actually even pre-starting a family, um, men who have real issues and concerns with being a father. So that's obviously difficult when you want to start a family when somebody doesn't want to start a family out of the two. Um, and, and that's interesting. That's really interesting work. And I, we were just talking, I had a, a, a very good success rate in, in helping men um, deal it. with deal with their mm -hmm. S um, and sort their stuff out, which is good. So, that's, so let's actually start with you, Simone. I'd like to start with asking you what may seem like a very obvious question, but if you could talk a little bit about why is going through infertility stuff stressful for couples and what, like, why does it impact their sex life? Mm. Well, starting a family, um, I think what happens is there can be a lot of magical thinking for women because we spend a lot of our time not trying to be pregnant. Mm. And then suddenly when we want to be pregnant, yes. it's like, bam, it's going right. to happen, boom. Right. And it doesn't, yeah. you know, and, and so that can be really difficult. And so at the beginning for the first three months, there can be sort of enthusiasm. But then mm. after that, when things aren't working, it can have that emotional impact. And women can end up blaming themselves. And if you're blaming yourself, then your self-esteem isn't good. And that's not sexy. Um, and you're looking on the outside in rather than actually like, I'm going to get pregnant. You're sort of like panicking and obsessing mm. about it. And also the factory sex that I know sort of um, Paul will talk about. But the factory sex that, that women can understandably... Um, kind of think, right, okay, we need to have right. sex yes. at right. this time. Yes. Boom, come on. I don't care yep. what day you've had. Right. Yep. Look at look at the right. clock. Yes. Look, right. look at what my time is says. <laughs> right. And I think that can be really difficult. And then even like, I've even had couples who said, oh, can you like have sex from behind because I want a boy? And can you uh, right. like, have sex on top? And because like... Of this, or if, I, if, you, if you have an orgasm or don't, does that have an impact yeah. on fertility? I see. Yeah, yeah. that's and a question I've it, had too. Yeah. yeah, and and there's no data to suggest that, by the way. Well, there oh. there has been from uh, not great. Small, yeah, <laughs> I, know, a small one from a I have small an eight thousand person one. Oh, do you? Yeah, it's okay. really interesting. It's new. It's ah, oh, okay. That's you do know okay. that's all from so, post World War II. All the men came home, tried it, all these different things, like the time from really? sex to ovulation. The male sperm are small; don't wow. last as long. Or a little faster, but die earlier. So there's all there's shuttle method, all well, that's that stuff. A, yeah, yeah. Those are all yeah. old yeah. wives' tales. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, I, well, I was reading that research from Britain, but anyway, women need to have <laughs> orgasms. Full stop. Whether they. Oh, what did say? Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bravo, oh, yeah. whoa. Yeah. whoa. Yeah. Why not? Time out. Why not? All about the orgasm. <laughs> I'm just saying, if but, you don't have an orgasm, orgasm doesn't mean you can't get pregnant. Yes, no, 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 absolutely. <laughs> no, I, I encourage, and I don't, also don't want to put pressure on women having orgasms, but orgasms. Right. Are wonderful. Oh yes. I just wanted to get my strike. <laughs> Many but, physiologic yeah. reasons for that. <laughs> yes. Very important. Um, so um, so the the pressure um, yeah. is different for the man and the woman, and that's why they come through the door. And mm -hmm. actually, um, if we talk about, we'll talk about strategies a bit. We'll talk about later that later. On. Yeah. But, yeah. So Let's that's, start with like yeah. what's going on. And Dr. Lentz, I'd love to know from your perspective as an OBGYN and an integrative medicine specialist. What is that mind-body connection? Yeah. You know, what's going on with stress and, oh, my God, yeah. this is the moment of the month. Well, and here's the thing. The minute you set, I mean, a physical intimacy is the ultimate or one of the ultimate mind-body meld experiences. And, the, yes. I mean, anybody in the room knows who's had sex that the minute you get out of your body into your mind, it's kind of over. Yes. And there are physiologic uh, explanations for that. And hormonal and neurotransmitter changes that occur when that happens that not only make it not fun, but could make it unpleasant. Um, we know that if we can integrate the mind and the body and try not to separate the two and have sort of that body experience, we're going to have much more enjoyment. So if we're just talking about the sexual experience, the encounter, that's very important. The problem is twofold. One, as Simone mentioned, 
you're talking about timing and pressure, okay? So that that's already, you, you've added that in. And there's a reality to that, and that's, and that's important, but there has to be a way, and I have some interesting ideas about how to deal with that, okay. to reintegrate it, okay? Um, the other problem is that, the, the, like I said, you know, for, from the female perspective, you don't have to have an orgasm to be fertile. But there's some interesting data emerging on uh, stress and uh, some of the neurotransmitters that can be detected and delay in fertility. It's not clear whether or not fertility is totally diminished or totally altered permanently by stress, but there is absolutely a delay in the time that you will get pregnant from stress. Now, that's a very, very blanket statement. I don't want to go too much further than that. Um, and the, the other part of that is that telling somebody, don't be stressed, relax, is not helpful at all. <laughs> so sometimes taking it out of the bedroom mm -hmm. is a way to, to deal with that, too. Taking, taking the stress uh, out of the bedroom and out of, or out of the sexual encounter is a better way to manage rather than just say, you're stressed and stress is going to impair your fertility. I mean, that does what? Yeah. Makes, makes you more well. stressed. <laughs> <laughs> makes you more stressed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for that. Dr. Turek, let's turn to you. I, I think, you know, most of us think of men as horny guys who are always ready to get it on. So is there an impact on men in when it turns not at all, to Not at all. It's all, <laughs> it's all female. I don't know. Right? <laughs> Probably have to go. So, um, so think of men as cavemen, right? I mean, they're, they're providers and protectors. They're they get you flowers for Valentine's Day, and that's it. But they do fill up your tank, your gas in your tank every week. They're providers and protectors. That's sort of the, the mantra of the caveman. And they're stressed. They have a lot to do. And they're told to come home at 5 o'clock. And you gotta, we have sex tonight. And they're like, honey. Uh, and you know, so they're in traffic. They finish their day. They're in traffic here. And they get home. And what's on their minds? I mean, what nervous system is activated right there? It's called sympathetic nervous right. system. This is what she was talking about. Yes. So and if you're a caveman and your sympathetic nervous system is activated, what are you doing? You're running from a woolly mammoth. Mm -hmm. OK? That's right. Same nervous That's system. That's exactly right. Right? So what do you want when you're running from a woolly mammoth for your life? Do you want an erection? Do you want to have sex? <laughs> Unlikely, right? Unlikely. So that's what, I mean, it's the same nervous system. We're 50,000 years older. That's it. And so that's what you're dealing with in a pretty unrealized body in a lot of ways for lots of men. So that's difficult. And so situational sex or, you know, um, sex by the clock, scheduled sex for men can be prohibitive. It can be very difficult. It's very distracting. It's not the autonomic, it's not a rest and restore feeling. So what I usually say is, you know, if you were in the beach in Hawaii, unconnected, do you get a normal erection? Oh yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. So then you know it works. You know the system's working and it's pretty much a stress issue. Then the question is how do you stop stress in men? That's hard. So disconnecting them is one, but I usually say, you know, you're running in fifth gear all the time. Why don't you just idle? So when you go home, mm. you know, listen to some music, relax a little, anticipate the sex like you did when you were dating. Yeah. Anticipate it. There's really important hormonal changes actually that occur in anticipation, fantasy, desire. It's actually a really important part of a sexual relationship and intimacy. And, it, you know, you have increased blood flow when you have increased testosterone and estrogen, which is what happens in that arousal state. It's really, really important. I mean, you know, I'm the science geek here, maybe, and you probably are a little bit of a science I love it geek. Probably big words. But <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the blood is flowing. Um, <laughs> but it's really, really important. And I think when people, for me, that helps. And I think when people understand that, um, you know, that can maybe help turn things around a little bit because it becomes so inhibitory and so much pressure. Yeah. And if you can restore that kind of excitement, I, that's true in any relationship. So I, I remember yeah. a great yeah. line I learned by a, a therapist who said, when, you, when you're dating, you love to have sex, but when you're married, you have sex for love. So the anticipation, mm -hmm. the desire does not precede the sex when you're married. It's more of like, I love this woman, I'm going to have sex with her, and the desire comes later after the realization of love. So, but clearly, you're anticipating sex when you're dating, the evening, the weekend, you're thinking about mm -hmm. it. And that's what's missing in a lot of long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you go a while and then you try to have a kid, you don't have that anticipation anymore. So get it back on the table. 
you know, yeah. let so the pot simmer before it boils. Yeah. And I have some, I have, yeah, I, let's transition yeah. to strategies. <laughs> yeah. And I want I'm all excited three about that. of you. <laughs> I want to get dirty. I want to get real. <laughs> like, let's have actual strategies right, for right. coping with this. So um, we'll talk about the emotional strategies later on. We're just going to talk specifically about Either one. sex issues. Either one. So um, let's get hot and steamy, first of all. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And, and transition there. Although I when she really announces it love, first, you know, yeah. very English. And now we will be hot and steamy. <laughs> if you're uncomfortable, we need, you I, we need the like the Monty Python skit. <laughs> so the big X on the screen. <laughs> yeah, right. You need to bring your visuals next time. I'll do that for you. Okay. Because we're friends. We're going off. <laughs> I think that's quite a British thing. It's like I'm going to I'm going to warn everyone. <laughs> is. This is the BBC announcement. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So um, strategies. I really loved what. Um, Dr. Suzanne was saying that because um, uh, anticipation and what I would just say is it's excitement getting couples excited again I think is really important so with couples that I work with while dealing with the emotional stuff and making sure that they feel actually safe because that yeah. is really important for women once they feel safe and once they feel sort of like you know that the resentment has gone and there's no blame on either side and they've worked through the guilt and any sadness and all the rest of it really sort of um bumping things up by sexting i know it sounds like really simple but just during the day yep. like i can't wait you can get as dirty as you want and i don't need to like go through my sexting list <laughs> i'm learning um but, <laughs> And apparently, I'm, I need to learn. Um, but uh, yeah, they're sort of like, it's really important because couples then, both the man and the woman, can get so excited and feel desired. Right. Suddenly, you feel desired because right. what happens at the beginning of yes. a relationship? Of course, you're having sex because you feel so desirable. Right. Yeah. There isn't any resentment. You're totally curious. You're willing to try in the bedroom. And it's actually easier when you first meet somebody to try stuff out rather than later on right. for, for couples. New research has come out there. So, um, so sexting, simple. Anyone can do it. I actually now am going to go to the emotional, which helps the sexual, which is say something you appreciate. Every single morning when you wake up in the morning, <laughs> Stacey, stop it, rolling your eyes. But if you add in that <laughs> emotional factor, it is incredible what it can do yeah. to intimacy levels and to actually wanting to go to that extra mile. Reading erotica, we all know from Fifty Shades of Grey, which has sort of become a bit of a cliche now, but women have been reading romance novels forever. It's yeah. like the right. biggest selling genre of books in America, a billion dollar business with very good steamy sex scenes. Now, interestingly, and, and Dr. Paul and I were talking about it earlier, so I'll, I'll let him sort of uh, carry on from here, but men have got to step up here. Sorry, guys, and I love men, but... If women are saying, hey, look, I, you know, I want to try this and I've read this and this is, men have got to actually go the extra mile and say, okay, yeah, we will try that, even though that's like a bit odd because the men I see are just like, yeah, hold on, if she's enthusiastic, then that's good enough for me. They don't mm -hmm. need all sort of the extra sort of fantasy and to get their arousal system. Uh, Are system you saying going. that sex is not a symphony for men? Have you guys seen that? Have you seen that graphic? It's like this 1970s, probably I don't know, some kind of electronic thing with like 7,000 plugs and knobs and things, and then and that's female sexuality, and below it is the little. Up, down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the statement I'd say, that, yeah. say for women, for men, is I know you like the I know you like sex because it's like steak, but save some for dessert. Yep, nice. <laughs> like yeah. it. That's your like that. solution. Like that. um, so yeah. the other, the other yeah. things you can do, I'm just sort of adding in very quickly, like iPhone, we all have an iPhone or some kind of device. Record yourselves. Now, people may not like that. Um, and some people will get really turned on by that, but you don't know until you try. Um, and if you do that, then just make sure that you put the camera from a bit of a height. <laughs> really, really good. More flattering light. Very <laughs> 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 she knows anything about it. No. I would think you'd put it like right here. You know? <laughs> well, so then that's the male female yeah. perspective. A selfie. Right selfie. There. Yeah. We want the panorama, he wants the clothes. Yeah. Here's your exactly. selfie, baby. Yeah, exactly. but, that's a good, but that's a really good, I mean, we're joking, but it's really important. And you said something very important about safety. And I think it goes both ways. There needs to be, it's, a, it's kind of a difficult conversation to initiate mm -hmm. if you are in a relationship that's a little bit longer term. 
and and especially if you're framing it around fertility, which then gets kind of weird with family and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of create some boundaries, create some rules. You're going to have to take a risk and get out on limb and and talk about fantasies, set some kind of basic ground rules, and have at it. And here is my hot tip. I am. So psyched that I thought of this. Okay, Ready? so I get I get asked all the time about you know ovulation time and fertility apps yeah. and basically you know cycle apps. There's a million of them out there. This is what I think. I think the partner, the non trying to get pregnant partner, should have a, somehow download that so that they know when high fertility is because you have to talk. That's what you did. So <laughs> much, you have to talk so much about it, and it's like okay, uh -oh, enough. I have stop to be home tonight. talking. It, don't talk. Right. Now, day 11, ooh, I'm going to sex her. You know what I mean? Day yes. 12, try a quickie. Day yeah. 13, bring some lingerie home. Same thing for the woman. Yeah. You know, if you feel sexy, the hormones get going. You're more juicy. You're into it. Greet, you know, greet your partner at the door in something unexpected or not very much or nothing, if you can do that safely. Um, really, you, you have to sort of, there's got to be some discussion and some advanced planning. Yeah. And then you can bring the novelty, which is critical, mm -hmm. back into the, the relationship. That's where the excitement, mm -hmm. the anticipation, the passion can happen. And it's fun again, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it helps just from like having been through the fertility mm -hmm. journey too, what you just said is that Chris, my husband, was yeah. like, when I call him, he was like the ovulation tracker. Right. Yeah. And he would be like, he'd give me a note and say, babe, it's sexy. Right, right. right. <laughs> you know, they like gay night. You know, it's like a little couple of guys. It's funny, but it wasn't up to me. It wasn't always on my Yeah. Mind. And, yeah, and, what, and then you're not the you, nag. We got to do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. In the sense that men can have a sense of control, yes. which can make yes. them feel empowered and important, and that they're part yeah. of the process. I think that's really And the um, number people. They like numbers. They like significant. Yeah. 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 And, and just something that um, Dr. Suzanne <laughs> said. Um, March you, Madness. You, you, made a, a, <laughs> you made a comment earlier about that's not sexy. And what is, is so important is that if, if a woman is blaming herself, thinking, Thinking, oh my goodness, you know, why isn't this working? That's not sexy. No. That is not going to help. Shame is the process. not sexy. Shame is not uh -uh. sexy. Mm. Guilt is not sexy. Yeah. Having pressure from family and friends, and oh, are you pregnant yet? And let yeah. you know, if you want to be a really good friend, like give the control back to the woman that is trying to get pregnant, mm -hmm. and she will deliver the information when she wants to deliver the yeah. information. Again, putting the power back in the in the woman who's who's trying to get pregnant and the couple who's trying to get pregnant. I think that's um, super, super important. Yes. I think with men, the I mean, there was a Psychology Today survey, very academic, mm -hmm. um, and it talked <laughs> about what is romance to men. So it started out with it's the irresistible, it's the, it's the irresistible desire to be irresistibly desired. Mm -hmm. And so men agreed with that. Women agree with that. Men agree with that. So men are actually quite romantic, down deep. And I've seen this because I see infertile men, and I have a forum on my website where if you really can't have a kid with your own biology, it's a space for you to go, called TuraClinicSupport.com, and just heal mm -hmm. because there's no out. I mean, you're not going to have your own kid. You, you can't go forward. And I've, if you read these posts, they're incredibly emotional. You wouldn't know if it's a man or a woman. I mean, they're mm -hmm. crying on their way to work. And it's just, they're just opening yeah. up like no other place you've ever seen because it's quiet and no one, and it's anonymous. Couldn't do it in the office, can't do support groups, but man, you get them online and let them bleed and they will, and they'll heal and they'll move on and it's beautiful. So I learned a lot about the depth of men doing that. But then the survey said, you know, what do men think are romantic? So sex is number seven. Wow. A walk on the beach, flowers, cuddle, a kiss. Um, holding hands, all above sex. On, on the, I don't forget what the tenth was. That's right. Falling asleep after sex. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or march, march, or football after sex. Uh, <laughs> catching a wave. So, uh, so, but it was interesting that you know men are delicate flowers, and and they just don't show it, and it's not in the culture to show, especially in America, puritanistic America, and and the way it's bred. So, I, you know. I think it's my Turek Clinic, the Turek Clinic, TTC, touch, talk, connect. Mm -hmm. I mean, go for a walk, hold your hands. Just those moments of being idle is probably all men need, where they can just take a look. We, my wife and I, who's in the audience, um, took the habit of a, another couple where we used to live, where 
they just left the kids at home for a week every maybe a year and just went over to Europe alone like they were single. Mm. And I'm like, do you really leave the kids? I mean, okay, little kids, they're real little kids. I mean, there's three of them. They said, yeah, you got to do it. And then they come back, they look completely different. I mean, they look like. They, so we did it once, went to Paris, and like yeah. <laughs> I felt like I was 17 years old. You know, it was wonderful. We had a wonderful time, and we were trying to conceive, and it was, it was incredible. And I just said, you know, some men can be so you can go back to that and uh, and the busy life and disconnect is key. Turn the phone off. Oh my God! Get oh, off please. Wi-Fi. Yes. yes. Turn the TV off. Yes. yes. And yes. you know, completely disconnect. It's part of that idle. Go and idle. Get that nervous system down. Get mm -hmm. the other one up. Rest and restore. And come back and it's it's just how do you do that everyone has to figure out their way to do it but a lot of it's the same it may not take as much time and I don't know if men are good at figuring out the women thing and they're also insecure because mm -hmm. they don't know if it's their problem or not and they're mm -hmm. losing their self-esteem yeah. and that's putting stress in of course their light switch has to go off you know for it to happen so a really um, good tip uh, that women can do to help men um, that I advise couples is like first of all for three it sounds a long time but for three months don't even think about getting pregnant get your sex life sorted mm, yeah. out yeah. get back to having good wonderful sex or improve the sex life that you already have because then that can take the pressure away from the man and suddenly the man feels like again like oh hello big boy Who the man <laughs> like, who's yeah, your daddy yeah like, I don't know. who's your daddy <laughs> Yeah, daddy issues. Don't say that to me. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> wrong person. Wrong country. Uh, wrong person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, that is really important, and and how women can help men yeah. because you've got to look at getting pregnant is a shared issue, and yeah. sex life. It's a shared issue. Yes. You each make up half of your sex life. And I think that is so important because you can both take responsibility right. and then say, honey, how you know how are you doing? Let's let's talk about it. But don't do that exactly as uh, Paul says, when a man walks straight through the, through the door because actually if you ask a man to talk about his emotions, when he's not ready, his blood pressure can go up. And whereas women, we can talk all day about our feelings. <laughs> I know. By a text, <laughs> more blue than grey all the time on the iPhone. Unreal. <laughs> um, uh, so, so that's the difference between men and women, and, and I think women can support their partners. My last lot. point is, if 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 there is a timing issue and it's too stressful, is that sperm does last a while. Yes, people during don't sex, it's that. a day or two. Yes. It's actually nurtured and it's last. So. We recommend normally every other day timed intercourse before ovulation is really the way to get pregnant. And I tell men, you know, you know, if it's not going to happen, just say, you know, can we just have dinner and a glass of wine and maybe just cut, see how it goes because, you know, yeah. eventually it'll work. And then maybe the next morning. I mean, it doesn't have to happen that night. So mm -hmm. take the pressure off as much as possible, the timing out of it and try to make it a little bit romantic by doing something different and then doing it in the morning or in the middle of the night or some other time when you're and so men aren't like it in the morning because they're not that stressed mm. I mean their testosterones are highest mm. and they're not that stressed they've just woken up maybe they had a nightmare maybe they didn't but you know it's often a good time <laughs> but the nightmare is not when they turn right and like oh my goodness I married her <laughs> oh my god oh, let's hope <laughs> that's you without makeup yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's the dog that I married. <laughs> Didn't you used to stand up. All right, well, I want to open it up to questions from the audience. You guys must have some questions. Let's see what's burning up out there. Um, early in the morning at like an ungodly 3 a.m., 4 a.m. hour, which is... Morning cool. wood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is exciting when you're dating. Yes. Um, but when you're married, you're like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> well, we're assuming that the, during your fertile period, the women are the horniest they're going to be, right? I mean, it's the horniest time of month, but... No, that's true. So, well, so that's, I would that's say a relationship let, thing, though, too. Yeah, exactly. You know, that you have to kind of ne that. negotiate right. around it, and I think it also depends on if this is like, is this a 
intimacy relationship issue or is or is there a fertility issue because it changes I mean there are there are biological requirements for fertility we just cannot get around those they just are there so you know you could compromise you know a little bit but but I think you have to compromise in a, in a relationship anyway so and you know. I th um, uh, I think as a uh, sex therapist first of all number one changing perspective in the sense of you both want to get pregnant so actually this isn't your husband going like oi poking you yeah. I, I want sex i have needs i don't care about it's three o'clock in the morning you both want the same thing and and actually what he can do is use touch so basically go you know let let him give you the chance to get excited mm -hmm. and aroused because then mm -hmm. the desire can right. carry on after that. So whatever it is, whether it's whispering, I'm gonna do the dishes. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you. Or spooning. <laughs> or spooning. Spooning leads to then forking. Have you not? Did you like that? Best I love one. science. <laughs> yes. I'm full of those. <laughs> forking. Thank God my kids aren't That's anywhere near here. <laughs> Dr. Suzanne on forking. It's all <laughs> That's my new website, on Forking. Uh, yeah. oh, forking. forking my, and my new NPR show, on um, Forking. I, I, was, I remember hearing once that um, you shouldn't talk about sex stuff when you're in the bedroom. Like, like so if that, it, I don't know, so I would like to hear you speak to that, but if, like, you know, if they're waking you up at 3 a.m., like, don't talk about it at 3 a.m., maybe mm. try to have that conversation mm -hmm. at 10 a.m. <laughs> or at 6 p.m. over dinner, rather than in the moment in the bedroom being like, what are you doing? Well, well it's kind of like, like sleep hygiene. Something? It's kind of that yeah. idea. And I don't, yeah, you got, you're more, but know. where, you know, the idea of sleep hygiene is that the bed should yeah. be for sleeping. So if you're having problems with sleep, don't do those other things that get you activated or that you use to get yourself back to sleep in the bedroom, take out of the bedroom. Right. And I kind of uh, intimated that when I was talking about when there are intimacy issues, and I think you guys can speak to that as well, but yeah. I think there shouldn't be charged emotional conversations about intimacy in the bed. Right. Like, Never. If you can have help. Those, like when you're have in the middle of it. Naked, right? in, in the den, have them in the den. and make, yeah. 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 yeah, and yeah. another yeah. time when you're cooled off. Yeah. You know? And the conversation that should be happening always, and I think this is especially when you're trying to start a family, is after you've had sex, for five minutes, that's all it takes, and if you want to have limit the time, no, <laughs> if, it, if it's three minutes, it doesn't matter, but have the conversation. What did you enjoy about that? Tell, tell me one thing that you really enjoyed about that. You're really so, long. So, so that you're giving each other that, um, that sexual confidence at a time that you really, really need it. You, and again, mm. sort of like... And it, you know, it's hormonally being imprinted. Yeah. You have all this oxytocin, mm. the hormone of love, which is interesting, the hormone that is released during labor and in nursing. It's a bonding hormone. It's so important. You have all that progesterone, which is that relaxation, Can bonding. Can I buy that? So just <laughs> well, you you can't. Well, that's just a whole kidding. other conversation, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so you have this sort of imprinting that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it's really deep stuff, you know. Yeah. In science. <laughs> so simmer the pot, and then it will boil. You can't go from cold to boil. Yeah. yeah. And sex Excellent. conversations are really difficult to have because what is sex? It's the most vulnerable thing that we do, mm -hmm. and actually, you know, we can we all have egos. Um, <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> we all have egos, and we all need to protect them, and we don't want to burst our our partner's, you know, sexual ego as well, because otherwise that's going to sort of affect his erections as well. So having that conversation and really, really, really trying to sit in the other person's shoes, whether you're the man or the woman, and talking about okay. This is how I feel. It's always mm. about owning. Definition of being an adult. Mm. And adults have sex. Definition is being responsible. We have to be responsible for our own stuff. And it can be really difficult, you know, when you're trying to get pregnant. It can be like, why isn't he rescuing me? Why isn't this all okay? And, right. and the guy can feel like, oh, why is like she making me feel like I'm a, right. you know, a, a sperm bank here? So um, that, that be very delicate and really see how how vulnerable you both are. And if you can have that kind of empathy, I think you can have a really good conversation about sex. Mm. Yeah, men are people too. <laughs> <laughs> and what Dr. Paul was saying, my research just sort of um, with, with couples is that men, sorry ladies, are actually more romantic than women. When I ask a, a man, oh, tell me about when you first, you know, proposed or when you first met, he can remember 
every single detail. Mm. And I'm not being stereotypical here, and I'm not bashing women, because apparently I am one. Mm-hmm. But we can remember like the bad things of what they didn't do like mm-hmm. afterwards. And I think it's it's really important to see men as very, deeply romantic, very, yeah. and deeply sensitive. Mm-hmm. Deeply mm-hmm. sensitive. Doesn't show, you'll never see it. Because yeah. men don't have that outlet, exactly what you were saying. We have we have each other. No, it's and, true, and, and culturally it's other. more acceptable. Well, yeah. clearly you handle stress. Women and men handle stress very differently. Yeah. I I agree with that because when it's it's interesting. I feel like my husband's much more sensitive. Like during fertility time when we were trying and you know scheduling stuff, you know, I was always like, let's just do quick, let's just bang it out. Like let's just do Right, practical, practical to do list. No, I'm saying like look, I like it wasn't like he was fine, ready to go, but I was just like, is he gonna just wanna like like you're on ready, don't Yes. Uh-huh. Like sometimes it's like, and then I feel bad because a lot of times it's, he's much more that sensitive person. So like, just some your point of view, that, like you know, like you know, I mean, it, what's kind of like a if a man is much more sensitive and you're kind of. I think he should assume he's sensitive, but he doesn't show it. So how do you deal with it? Talk and you've about probably like seen it during like, the. Oh, during the romantic phase of the relationship, mm-hmm. that's probably mm-hmm. still there. It's just buried. Mm-hmm. No, I mean he's very, yeah. very sensitive. Like I'm the one who's much more. We can just do it. We can have a Christmas, <laughs> but he's like wants to like make it look really special. Well, then you do that. <laughs> I mean, as long as it happens, right? It's like you're just you're trying to get to you know the point B. So. So can you tell us a little bit more about like strategies? For so for men, it's really yeah. taking good care of yourself. I okay. think for men, it's. Exercise, yoga, massage, acupuncture, take that time out, take care of yourself, yeah. have some time in the morning, have some time in the evening, sleep well, all that exercise, get your butt, get in shape. It's taking great care of yourself. Be proud of your body, eat well, you know, and it's part of the, you both should do that. That's really the healthiest yeah, way to exactly. approach it. Exactly. This is something we all it's need very to do. We need to attend mm. to ourselves as a whole person, mm. as you're saying, holistically. It's like, you as know, a, you're and, in a car s- show and you're a car and you're getting all tuned up and, right. you know, you got to show it. And it's, that works the best because you feel the best about yourself. It's yeah, self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and what I've learned from my work with couples is that men really do not like and enjoy sex when their partner is not enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That feels really like wrong to them and, and, yeah. and horrible to yeah. them. Yeah. It's it's just that that is not it's not even not hot. It's actually quite damaging for them. It's yeah, it's really unhot. Um, so what women can do and there's I'm not going to say there's new research. I'm going to say it's a study that right. I read the other day that mm-hmm. actually when women pretend and fake being more turned on going to to your point they can actually end up being more turned Mm -hmm. on and it can lead of course then to more chance of orgasm Mm -hmm. so that is the only kind of faking that women must do Mm -hmm. and again it goes back to the point of sort of like on your way to arousal and the desire following um, okay, but I'd, I'd love be enthusiastic. To, yeah, I'd love to um, see if anybody else has questions because we just like get the microphone around a little more here. Thank you, Sarah, up here. Could you talk a little more about some of the, like you mentioned a little bit, some of the fallacies or the things that people think have to happen during sex in order to conceive, but they're myth? You That's kind of question. mentioned some. It's a great question. So one truth is there has to be a male orgasm with, with sperm delivery. Or myth there. That's True. right. <laughs> which which many a teenager in the backseat of a car has discovered accidentally. Yeah. Ejaculatory <laughs> fluid. And you don't can, need a yeah. normal erection to do that, but mm-hmm. you generally do. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think we sort of talked about sort of the making, yeah, the orgasm is required for female fertility. We touched a little bit on um, timing in terms of how often mm-hmm. you have to have sex. Um, what was the other one I was going to say? Positions. Positions. Yeah. Uh, how to get a boy versus a girl. Uh, yeah, really? I, I it's not but true. It, it's not. I want to ask you actually, from you, you guys, from the scientific point of view, um, what we or what I've I've um, read is that often the man on top position 
uh, has certainly been written about saying, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the best way to get pregnant. Yeah. Now, I actually just tell my couples have passionate sex. That's the best way to get right. pregnant. But from a scientific point of view, is there anything aware, about the fact that it's deeper thrusting? And, yeah. Right. Okay, There's fine. no doubt. Yeah. And okay. besides, that'd be like, I mean, look around the room. Do we all look the same? Internally, we don't look the same either. I mean, yes, we are mm. all human. But there's just, that just can't possible. That can't yeah. be possible. No, right. it's not. Yeah. Ayurveda says so. <laughs> okay, so that's, Good, a, like that. so that's a myth. So sex positions, right. we've uh, now decided myth. Just now timing. Timing, timing, is, timing yeah. is Do you realize real, it's only right? been 70 years since we knew that women were fertile only two days a month? No. Up until 1910, it was thought that women could get pregnant any time a month. Which Believe seems to be true when they're, which seems to be true when they're 18, age. but... <laughs> Someone discovered... <laughs> well, the right. Definitely not when you're 38. <laughs> the hormones, the hormones, estrogen, measured them, things like that. And then the cha Catholic Church fi figured it out and said, perfect, oh. yeah. don't have sex here and don't have sex here. Rhythm method was developed. They took the science and they published it in a book. They were so excited. That's they cool. took the science and that's how the rhythm method started. Yeah. And that's when people realized you only have about two days. But a great study came out in the New England Journal where they had couples go have sex, trying to conceive, they did or they didn't, and they took their diaries of the timing of the sex and reviewed them and said, okay, mm. who got pregnant and what was their pattern? So they, didn't, so they didn't tell them what to do. They just took the diaries of 600 couples and they found that if you know when ovulation is and you start before that, your chance of pregnancy is 80%. If you go, if you react to a kit or to a basal body temperature, and just have sex right at the time or a little after oh. ovulation, it's 20% of those couples mm. got wow. pregnant. Mm. So well, front-loading it then. is really important. And that agrees with the idea that sperm lasts a while. Mm -hmm. So basically you want to fill the system with sperm and let the egg fall into it. And I love you guys, but I'm just going to have to wrap it up. I know you have a lot more to say. I'm sure there are a million more questions out there, but we're actually running out of time. So um, I, I just want to say thank you to Dr. Paul Turek of the Turek Clinic, male health and fertility specialist, Dr. Suzanne Gilberg-Lenz, who is an OBGYN and integrative health specialist, if anybody's looking for a female doctor, and Simone Bien, who's a sex therapist and had all kinds of great wisdom to share. So lots of people you can talk to. Feel free to approach them after the panel. You can also sign up through the Fertility Planet website to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with any of the experts. So if you're interested in, in doing that, please have a look. Also, the video will be up on the website after the fact. So if you want to refer it to any of your friends or watch it again, um, you can do so. And I wanted to thank uh, Renovum, who is our sponsor for this session. And thank you all for joining us. And um, we would really like to encourage you to use social media while you're at Fertility Planet with the hashtag FPLA14. So if you feel like tweeting, Facebooking, all of that good stuff, please join the conversation. I'm sure all of our experts will be on, on there too, responding to your questions and concerns. Thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you.